Is everyone rolling? We're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling. Ready to rock? If you are seeing the rain, and it was raining earlier, Agne. Yeah. Uh, it means one thing and one thing only that somewhere in the world there's a human being that is tagged Nkosinati Ntaganipo Mavuso. You fetched all of them. I did. I did. Someone has tagged them and said, Mvula. Yeah. Mvula ya mi Yimanzi njena utandol wako Standwa sami yeah, feel like John Moran. Need a triple double. Told him check the stats. Yeah, I got a couple. I don't draw the ball. Now I never fumble. I'm the MVP. Now I feel like Russell. Feel like John Moran. Need a triple double. Told him check the stats. Yeah, I got a couple. I don't draw the ball. Now I never fumble. I'm the MVP. Now I feel like Russell. The hit maker is with us, the visionary, the artist, the exceptional human being, someone I'm blessed to call my friend, but now just an individual that I'm interviewing. His name is Langa Mabuso, and he's with us on the Five on a Call. Hello, my Hello. Friend. How are you? I'm excited. Are I'm excited you? to be on the I've watched Five on the Call, so you have. it's my turn. And you've been begging for yes. this interview. You've been like, I'm Listen. like, how come I'm not on your show? <laughs> <laughs> no, really, yes. no jokes, really. No, for real, for real, um, for real. Look, I can't glorify you enough. I can't celebrate you enough. I know where you come from. I know um, that you're here with us in an exceptional way. But let me not be rude because you guys are watching. To all the friends, the family, and the lovers, and the followers, and the phenomenal individuals that are part and parcel with this platform, that is Five Minute Call. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving us love. For the comments that come through, for any bit that you pour back into this platform that pours unto you. But like I said, we are in conversation with this phenomenal, phenomenal human being. And like I said, there's a word that I said glorify. Yeah. And glorify, I just kind of think of light, langa. Yeah. Let's actually, let's dispel this. Let's speak about this first. Your That's the langa. reason. No, my name is not langa. Please give me a dress. I know like, there's been interviews and yeah, conversations. Absolutely. But for the purpose of us here and our family here. Let me break it down like in the most cultural way possible, right? Um, in most Nguni cultures or, or, or Zulu or in the Zulu culture, if your father hasn't lobolat your mother or completed marriage with your mother in that blood has been spilled in uh, your if that doesn't happen, you are technically not supposed to use the, your father's surname. Mm. Even if he comes in Klaulas, as a Sholezim Deninwak, Uklaula and Oglobola are like two different things, right? And so, because I was never Lobola in a sense by my father, or my mother was never Lobola by him, I wasn't born in wedlock, I could never use her surname, yeah. right? And so I was raised by the Mavuso family, which is my mother's family. And then she got married when I was like two years old. Mm -hmm. um, and then raised by the Mdawong family, yeah. which is where she's married into. And so um, culturally, I then have to later do a ceremony of thanks to the Mdawong family because they've raised me. And so my ancestors will recognize them and give thanks to them. But because growing up as a stepchild, there's a sense of like not belonging at times, right? In that journey, you will kind of want to discover yourself and identify yourself with people that look like you, people that have similarities to you, um, and sometimes it's not even like the step parent who makes you feel outside. Sometimes it's an auntie at a family mm. gathering. Mm. He's like, oh, no, man. Mm. It's okay. Like someone that's your age, you yeah. know, you know, like that kind of mm. thing. And so I wanted to identify with my father's family in some kind of way. And that's why I use Lang so that I acknowledge them and, and I identify with the people that I look 
crazily alike. I walk like my father. I speak like him. Um, Kenaren Kahane is just like him, <laughs> which is crazy because I've never lived in a house with him. Wow. So it was for that specifically. Um, but also I liked what the, what, what the name means. It's, it's the sun, right? And so what does the sun give us? It gives us light. It gives us warmth. It gives us life. Mm. you know and so i want do. the music to do us. that yeah i need the music to do that to give us life renewed life to give us mm. um warmth uh healing and so mm. that's why i love the name so much and we love it too mm. i know you know you've mentioned that's what you want your music to do, what you want your art and your craft to do yeah is there any very specific way that you describe your genre because you're very intentional about how you position yourself yeah because i know about my mt i'm a piano album <laughs> you know i've played everywhere you know when i started i used to work with a very alternative artist named spook matambo yes um and i've worked with black coffee i've worked with so many different artists um i've sat in i'm a piano sessions and recorded um but i think that the music resonates around love so i think when it comes to genre I obviously sit very close to the R&B and soul space uh, because I write a lot about love, uh, because mm -hmm. I want a lot of <laughs> love. Um, but I've played in different spaces and I think that an artist of this generation no longer needs to like box themselves into one kind of thing, you know? So good. Um, and I saw there was like a debate for a while about like should hip hop artists like jump into I'm a piano and like are they still hip hop artists? Mm -hmm. Um and Misa said such a like such a such a poignant thing that I realized the other day. She said that rap is an acronym, it's rhythm and poetry, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a specific genre, that's a specific way of expressing yourself in music. But hip hop is a culture. You know, and so hip hop is embodied by different kinds of contributions around it. It's not just one thing, you know, mm. uh, shoes, clothing, where you go, like that kind of thing. It's, it, it's a culture. And so when you look at that space where you have artists like Young Stunner who play in like both realms, the songs are not necessarily hip hop, but the culture is hip hop and it's hip hop wow. in the context of South Africa. And I think even with me, it's like, I don't think the music's always R&B, you know? Okay. I think that um, maybe I'm, I'm in that culture of soul, mm -hmm. um, but, but different songs are different things, you know? Like this, this teat is on, Pop. Yeah, like, there's songs that are pop. absolutely pop. Afro, yeah. There's songs that are absolutely like, like Love Lost. When I wrote that, I I was very intentionally like listening to D'Angelo every single day, yeah. and that's what it, that was the influence, right? I was like, I wish that I had made music like in the Soul Aquarian era, right? So there was these guys, the Soul Aquarians, all Aquarius, uh, D'Angelo, Erica Badu, whatever, all of those people, early two thousands they were making like this really beautiful R&B music. And I was like, if I had been born in that time, or if I, if I had made music in that time, what mm. would it sound like? And that's when I made Love Lost. Which makes me wonder, what was 13-year-old Nati listening to? Not Langama. Yeah. I mean, I was listening to what everyone else was listening to. I was listening to what was on TV. Yes. On your TV, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, because remember, we consumed music differently then. Yeah. Um, it was Bluetooth era. And so it was whatever your friend has that they can share with you. So it yeah, would MP3. be MP3, Chris Brown, underscore, Jordan Sparks, underscore. No, no it, 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 underscore, no. featuring Chris Brown. <laughs> exactly. Oh so God. it would be, it was that era, right? And then you would see a music video once in a while. Yeah. You know, the gag is like, guys, um, <laughs> 
our team that is behind the camera is substantially younger than us. <laughs> so they're laughing at the mere thought that you'd have to like wait for something. We come from an era crazy. of the cassette. Yeah. But we we existed in both worlds, right? It's is beautiful. That we had we were like at the end of like a very analog time going into the digital exactly. time. So we knew a childhood without Facebook. Yes. There's kids we who knew don't a vinyl know. Era. Like, we knew a vinyl era. We knew... We actually knew we a time knew like this. We knew like DSTV Open Time. Yes. Where you would search to get Mnet for an hour before your parents got you DSTV. Because yes. DSTV was expensive then. Yes. And Open Time was like, what was it? Five to six. Yes. <laughs> so. And it was like, it was like a, Open Time was a very particular yeah, time yeah, yeah, within... Yeah, yeah. Oh my word, our age. So I was listening to the every everything that everyone else was listening to. And then yeah. when I got to high school, I started thinking that I'm like deeper than everyone. Okay. And so I started going into like Neo Soul. Uh -huh. And I was listening to music Soul Child, Duele, D'Angelo, Fleur Tree, um, Les Nubian, like all of those people. Cause I was like, yeah, I don't listen to commercial music, you know? Okay. And then I, they, that didn't last for a long time. Especially at the institution that you were in. Yeah. So I went to NSA. Yeah. A very deeply artistically entrenched space. Mm. Tell me about that experience very briefly. Fun. Mm -hmm. So much fun. The National School of the Arts. Yeah. Do you know what? I and, I and I've spoken about this before. Primary school and maybe in reflection now, like it was rough. Like I had, okay. I, I enjoyed, I think the, the thing that made primary school easier for me was the fact that I was talented, right? Mm. But then I started to realize that, excuse me, I started to realize that people valued me for my voice and not for mm. my, 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 my personhood, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was nine or 10, like a group of, so I was always friends with the girls mm -hmm. in primary school, like since day one. And I remember like in grade three, grade four, all the boys in the grade come over to me and they're like, we need to have a meeting with you. Um, and they pull me aside and they're like, you're embarrassing our grade. Why do you only hang out with girls? Why? Uh... This was, you were guys were nine, 10. Yeah. Okay. Um, why are you playing with just the girls? Um, you're making our grade look gay, blah, 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 blah. And they made me stop playing with the girls for a good four months, right? And the girls were complicit in it. Like, people who were friends, no, aren't you gonna go play with so-and-so? Aren't you gonna go do this and that? I never played sports until I started hanging out with those boys. Next thing, I'm like playing soccer now and I'm doing all of it. And I have you good at it? had no interest in it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so that was rough and I think that that experience made me want to be around people who would embrace like being different and that was NSA for me you know I got to NSA and I met all kinds of people you know mm. I always say to people going to NSA is like going to Crawford and going to Supatilla at the same time like it's there's moments of it being bougie, but there's moments of it just feeling like mm. at any time. Do you yes. know what I mean? Yes. But that's because we have. But that's because the school is based on talent mm. and not a background of wealth. You know, you'd have the most talented kid from Alexandra who's grown up from like a really underprivileged space, who's just done tzotzi or blood diamond right and they're there just because they're talented mm. and so it evened the playing field and it kind of allowed us to go through that varsity experience before we got to it and so mm -hmm. it was fun i had lots of fun at nsa have you ever found yourself in a time where you felt misunderstood or rejected by the industry i think everyone does at some point mm -hmm. I think, especially when you start coming into your own and you start being honest about the things that you want to do, you're often met with resistance. Mm -hmm. And I think when I first got, got inside, 
I was very clear on who I wanted to be and what I wanted to put out. Mm -hmm. And um, and how old were you when this happened? I'm like 22, mm -hmm. right? But my first deal that was offered to me, I was maybe 15. The things I learned. And I was like, no. My mom was like, no. And I'm glad it didn't happen then because mm -hmm. it would have been too much. Yeah. And I didn't know what I wanted to say at that age. You know, but when I did get signed, I would clash a lot with my team sometimes because uh, they'd want me to do a specific style of music, to dress a specific way. Um, there was a point where I had a manager who wanted to PR a relationship for me. Like I was going to date some girl for PR. I was like, what? And he was having like a legit, like straight face conversation with me. I won't forget this. We're at Tasha's in Rosebank. Mm. He's like, she's about to do this with her career. She's going to elevate you. You guys can date for three, four months and then Is you can go on. I don't want to say her name because <laughs> she's big. Um, but yeah, I was told to date somebody. <laughs> They should have said I should date you because that would have been easier to like pretend. It would have, but you don't want to. Because we've been friends for the longest time. Yeah, but you know. But no, <laughs> also. Do you know what also I mean? No. Why do we have to? I don't know. I, I just, it just didn't make sense. It, yeah, it's also just like you don't believe in the craft enough. But it also then took me back to being nine and having a bunch of boys around me saying, this is how you should be. Oh, of course. Do you know what I mean? Oh. So, of course. Mm. But we speak about the trajectory of who you are and your craft mm -hmm. and what cemented you and where you are today. What do you think are the key ingredients for longevity? We live in an era where we stream, a song pops today, oh. you s literally spring into stardom overnight. We actually live in an era of overnight success. We yeah. really do. We do. Yeah. Um, but if you're playing the long game, that's not sustainable. Absolutely. So what does playing the long game look like and what are the key elements in staying in the game? I think it starts with investing in, in what you do, first and foremost. I think it, it starts by bettering yourself all the time, mm -hmm. being surrounded by people who make you want to be better, people who are better than you, who, who teach you to be better. Um, and then once you, once you have that kind of culture within yourself, then you have to just be consistent and persistent, mm -hmm. always. Um, like I always, I always tell people I love Gamun Pala so much because I see how much she works at what she does. Yeah. Like how much investment she has. Like I see how you do that. Like how you have a character Bible, how you know who, who this character is, where she comes from. Answering questions that won't even be asked in, in, in the context of the play or, 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 or the movie or the show, but, but knowing the intention behind every word, mm. right? And that comes from wanting to be better. You could have just said, I've graduated from Vits and uh, I'm pretty, so I can just act. I just need to learn the lines, you know? Wake up at two just before you have call and like start highlighting and preparing. But like, I think the long game comes with preparation comes with investment it comes with respect for your craft and the people around you as well you know i think that our industry is so small and you don't know whose toes you're stepping on but it shouldn't even matter that who they are you know just because they, they they're a person you should start by respecting them you know we could wake up tomorrow and the boys behind the camera they could be the ones running things you know but imagine if we came here with some diva attitude for them and didn't want to speak to them and didn't want to engage beyond just sitting on a couch and them doing their job mm. you know so it's about all of that respect care investment mm. <laughs> so gross like you've just sucked me right in because you yourself are an institution on your own. If anyone studies your journey and where you are today, yeah. it's like 
this is worthy of celebration and praise. Also because you don't play it safe. Mm-mm. Like, you know, you play around the edges. You had a seven seconds rendition. Yeah. Um, and, you know, play clip here. <laughs> <laughs> so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but outside of what we've mentioned, I think which are incredible things to really just hold on to. Mm. What's important of spirituality within not just your line of work, but in how you interact with your gift and how you interact with how you share it? I don't know if it, if it necessarily like is a blanket statement for all artists that spirituality has to be a part of it. I think it's something that has just been a part of my life, you know, I've, I've realized that the more rooted I am in God, the better the music, the better the performances. Um, and a lot of the time, the best music comes after the worst time mm. for me. And it comes from reflection. Like this year has been a year of just like, <laughs> Isolation in a very big way, you know, it's been a year of isolation um, in that I've needed to to really be by myself, like relationship ended, my producer's in New York, the other one is in LA, I haven't been able to travel as much and so studio has been more of an isolated experience, writing has been more of an isolated experience and and at some point, I actually stopped and I was like, maybe God doesn't want me to do this right now. Mm. Mm. And it's tough to like be there where everyone's like, give us a single, give us this, give us that. And I'm like, actually, I don't think that I'm in that season right now. I've had like six years of releasing music, six years of like constantly doing stuff. And I think that my body and my spirit is saying, whoa, mm-hmm. all of the things that happened in that time, have you been able to take stock? And it feels like the isolation has been to take stock, yeah. right? And, but also to be like clear on the things I wanna do, you know, preparing for, obviously like for me, elevating the music is always like my top priority. And so I'm constantly thinking, of different ways to present the music, different ways to interact with the music, working with different kinds of people, you know? Um, And so that's been really interesting for me. Like I spent most of the beginning of the year working with Dabo Zulu, who's like this prolific uh, jazz artist, you know? And he's known for for his um, African orchestra. And he spent a lot of time in Europe. And when he came back, He was like, I want to take African instruments and I want to take black people and create jazz and create an orchestra from that. And to sit with a man of like that wealth of knowledge in music was intimidating. Do you not think sitting with you is intimidating? I think it is to, to, I think there's people who who, who sit around me and, and feel intimidated in that kind of way. But those are the people I shouldn't be sitting with. Because what am I, what am I going to learn, right? And what am I going to impart onto them if they feel intimidated by me? Let me intimidate you for a good reason, mm. you know? Let me be brilliant so that you're intimidated for a good reason, you know? And so let that intimidation be the space that allows us to engage, to teach one another, to share, right? And let me go to the one who intimidates me so I can do the same thing, right? Where I can listen, I can, I can, I can be led. I can, I can be challenged, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, for, for the sake of my growth, I needed to step away and God removed Darren, you know, and sent him to New York. And he's been doing his masters in, in music there. Um, and, and working in a, in a studio as an intern where he watches Pharrell, watches Beyonce come in, Mm. sees them record. So he comes back better than me, Mm. right? Because he's doing the same thing that I'm doing here. I'm sitting at the hands of the masters and he sits at the the feet of the masters as well and and takes in. And so 
I think that this year was for that for me. Mm. You know, which wasn't easy. At all. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Um, but I learned a lot. Good. I've learned a lot and I'm ready to share a lot and have yeah. fun a lot. So I'm going to play a game. It's called okay. the Facets and Faces. Not even faces. I guess it's really just... Uh, I have to make faces. No, you don't. You really don't. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. I know have glasses on. And you got all this drip and swag on. Girl, you know me. But the facets of Lana. So you okay. wear many hats within what you mm -hmm. do. Um, but just generally, as people, we interact with people and the world in a way where we have to show up as different people. Yeah, so absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to mention a role that you play in society. Okay. And you have to think of a song that signifies it or how you would describe yourself. In, in that, that moment. Yes. Okay. Nkosinati, the sun. Um, and if it's a song, you can sing it. If it's a song that comes to mind. No, you know, when I have to be Nati, the sun, like I, I have to be, at this point in my life, almost like the provider. Okay. For a lot of my family. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, Nkosinati, the brother. <laughs> the big brother. <laughs> um, he would probably say annoying. Okay. <laughs> Natty the friend. Oh my god. Slash Langa the friend. That is in this. Hey, hey. <laughs> so you know me, I'm crazy. Hey, yes. like people never get to Chapa, see that like side of me. Like, yeah. that's. That's Natty the friend. Like Natty the. Pull you out, basically. Like, <laughs> <need to go. laughs> the other day, I was telling, and this is I don't know why I'm telling you or putting this out there, but I was like counting how many times I've been cheated on in like my previous relationship, right? And I got into like 21 people, right? And then no legit, um, literally like over all of the years that we've been together, and. I was, and then, and then Merica says to me, <laughs> she says, 21, can you do <laughs> some for me? <laughs> I was like, that's you making a joke out of my head. But I was like, anyway, it's past. But yeah, that's not too different. Fun. And likes laughing and likes having a good time. And then you have to, um, Put me in an Uber home. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> not the actor. Uh, not the actor. Um, yo, I haven't done it in a while, but he was very... Um, conscious of everything. Like, I... You know, and this is one thing I want to like work on when it comes to the acting. I want to know the character so well and know my lines so well that I'm not worried about my body, how I look, like how, you know what I mean? Like the superficial things I want to become and let go. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I haven't been ready to get back into it because I know that if I'd be on a camera, I'd be thinking about what's my face doing? Mm. No, 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 you know? Um, I think the best thing about when I was an actor was that I was a, an actor who listened. And I think that's what most of acting is about. Mm. It's about listening and responding to what you've heard. Yeah. That's why most of your first classes when you're doing drama is improv, Yeah. right? Because it's not about what's on the script, but it's, it's not about the, 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 the specific words on the script, but it's more about the scenario and the subtext mm. and what you're trying to put across, yeah. right? So I can't be like, but Candace, you didn't say the bottle. Mm. You said the cup or the mm. drink or whatever, right? Mm. I shouldn't be so precious about the words. Mm. I should be more precious about what we're trying to share and what we're trying yeah. to impart in the story. Um, and that comes from listening and that comes from responding. But I really need to let go of like being in my head when I'm doing it. And you so, yeah. Natty the lover. 
Ooh. Or Langa the Lover, whichever one you introduce yourself as. No, I definitely, you don't date Langa when you date me. Langa writes the songs about you, definitely. Um, but you don't date Langa. Um, Nazi the Lover, yo. Yo, 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 yo. I am a sucker for love. I love love so much. Like, I love love. Like, but like mundane. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, let's go buy groceries together. Let's watch movies on a Friday together. Let the rain um, fall. Ah, oh, let the rain fall. Wash us clean of yesterday. You know, like, let's do nothing. That's how I know that I can be with someone, hey? If I can be nothing with you, oh, then you're the one. You're the one to fill up my space. Because I don't have to... I don't have to be anything but myself. Mm. I can be like significantly insignificant. Mm. Like just sit there. So. Well, I love the love. fashionista. The fashionista. Just um, a word or a song? Uh, Lang of the fashionista. Oh, black like my soul. I love the color black. It's always a little bit of black with some with some glitter. You know I love a sequence jacket for the shows. Yeah. You always need a little bit of drama, a little bit of luther. You, have you ever seen... Um, there's a video of luther. I think he's performing... <clears throat> he's performing so amazing. And so, like, the backing singers are like... Love has truly, and they've got like sequence jackets for days, right? And then he comes out, and and from the stage he comes out, and it's literally give it just, to us, give it to us, give it, give it to us. The, when he comes out, yes, love has truly been good to me, and not even one moment I messed up the lyrics. Don't kill me. Bye-bye, sadness, hello, hello. I love Luther. Love Luther. Luther loves you. Love Luther. Luther. Angel Luther. Angel Luther. Love Luther. But another favorite musician of mine was Ante uh, Tepotola. I what a man. <laughs> <laughs> I describe the no. late the title. Let me tell you, if he was here, he would agree with me. Like, uh, so, that itself was related to a good family friend of mine, right? And so, so then they organize that we meet and we have dinner and it's really amazing. And he sings every now and then. Uh, we'll light a cigar. He says, after every like fifth word tells us the craziest stories but let me tell you that man this ever had a gift and but like any other musician had a really fun life mm -hmm. because he tell he told us so many stories i remember him telling us a story about how uh brahu calls him and says hey Belafonte is having a party in LA. Let's go. They're in Johannesburg. They go to Jan Smart's airport. They get onto, I think it was still the Concorde or whatever airplane, fly to LA, go to a party, have a good time. Three days later, they're back in Johannesburg. Life is different. Imagine that. So. You got a Toma guy. Yeah, no. But, 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 but what I, you see, we have to take a take a first. Before we can go, um, but I love, I love, I love meeting the humanity in people before, mm. before the grandioseness of their mm. star. You know, when I first met Black Coffee, I just met like, oh, but not, you know, mm -hmm. excuse me. Um, and when I met that it was the same thing. I met that it's a go high, you know, mm. I didn't meet the village Pope, mm. you know. I'd seen the village Pope growing up and seen the magnitude of his gift and the magnitude of, of his songs. Like, it was like prayer and song, mm. you know? Like, just beautiful. 
But I loved meeting the human, you know? Yes. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah. One last game I want to play. Okay. Very, very brief. I was going to do like three songs, but I think we can do one. Okay. You said that um, you are not rigid in terms of genre, mm -hmm. in terms of sound. I'm going to give you a song. Okay. And you must... You think I'm going to know it? Remix it, you will. <laughs> I want you to lang up Mavusofai the song the best way. You what can. song is this? Sister Bettina. Oh my god, okay, let's try. <clears throat> In the meantime, holy shit. Sister Bettina. In the meantime, holy shit, yeah, Holy shit. <laughs> you know, I have so much fun. Um, off camera, you asked me uh, if, if I ever know if a song is a hit. Yes, that I was going to get to that. Yes. And you just created one? No. <laughs> yeah. No. But I will say to you, every song that I've always known was going to be like really successful has been successful. And every time I've, I've had label people try to tell me to you do another song, and I've said mm. to them, this is not a single, mm. and then let them do it, six months later, they've always come back and said, You're right. even other people's music. Yeah. Like, if I'm in the studio and I'm listening to someone else's song, I can tell you if it's going to do well or not. I just have that ear. Like, maybe later on I'll just become an a and exec and stop singing. But yeah, like, even Clizio with Loiso was never supposed to happen. Mm. He had given me another beat and he had wanted us to work on a different song. I got to the studio, we were recording at Black Diamond's house. Um, and then do Brown's. Uh, he happens to play in Clizio by mistake, right? And it just had, uh, it just had the chorus, in Clizio, you know? And then Loiso was downstairs making auras or something like that. He comes back, we're playing Clizio. I said, screw that song that you said we're going to do. This is the song that I want to do with you. He's like, no, I want to keep it. I said, mm-mm. He's like, okay, right to it. And I was like, I already have a pre-chorus for you. I'm like, Buka. Baby, I'm low. Ooh, God. I've been trying, trying, really trying, baby. I know you're crying, I know you're crying. Cause I am failing. Stop it. I literally knew. I was like, this is going to be a song. I was like, this is going to be a song. Sunday Blues? Sunday Blues, I wrote it as an assignment for school. Uh-huh, and the video went viral. Yeah, but it was actually, it was a jazz song first. Mm -hmm. And then I took the words. So the one day, I'm coming back from the office. I was working in agency then. I don't know if you remember this. I was working in agency, and I just, I was like, mm, over it. And so Darren sends me like a little bit of a piano piece. And so I start singing over it in the kitchen. Uh, Baby, I won't stand my love. And I knew I was like, that's a, that's a thing, right? The rain keeps falling. Love, don't leave me. Love, 
last but not least, okay. what is the ultimate dream? We know Grammy mm. Award winning is Absolutely. somewhere in the mix. Last, briefly. Those are like guarantees for me. Hey, I think what the biggest dream for me is is to change people's lives, right? And my biggest dream is to to enable children in rural and township schools the opportunity to have music education so that they can explore their talents, so that we don't continue to have videos of super talented kids whose gifts are not being honed and and um, being prepared, you know? Um, I think that studying art shouldn't be a privilege. It should be a part of our curriculum. It should be a part of our what, 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 what we have the opportunity to learn. You know, when kids, when you when you meet kids who went to private school, they'll say things like, oh my God, I stopped playing recorder when I was in grade three and violin when I was in grade five because I was just over it. I was just over it because they had the opportunity, right? Um, but kids in the township and kids in the rural areas who often are incredibly, incredibly gifted don't have that chance, you know? And so they view this space as something far away from them most times. And so I would like to eventually build a program that uh, redresses that across the country and hopefully across Africa one day. That's my real, real big dream. And I can't wait for us to play this video back. Yeah. When we see it in real time. Education. And we get to say that five minute call was part of it. You saw it here first. You heard it here first. You heard the hit maker, the sister Bettina maker. My love, my friend, you are massive beyond words and majestic beyond comprehension. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. To all of you guys, you've been waiting for moments like this and we promised them to you. We said that the Five Minute Call is a home of all things entertainment, a knowledge sharing platform where you get to be inspired and called into purpose in a brand new way. And if this wasn't the conversation that did that, then I don't know what is. Hopefully you'll wait for it. You'll keep subscribing, you'll keep giving us love, you'll keep sharing and saying that this is the home of all things entertainment because you ought to consider yourself blessed. From me, Candice Murisele, and the phenomenal, formidable, beyond describable, Hey, I need to see you every day, Trump. I'm gonna start calling. Oh, because I'm gonna be eager. Uh, oh, no, we're doing this. No, we're doing this. For, this is work. <laughs> this is work. But you know, when I'm on the phone with you, I'm just like, show me how. Yeah, like, no, wow. truly, truly. And then I sometimes I just don't answer your calls. No, truly, what? a lot of the time. No, it's not that kind of body. Anyway, <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you so very we much for indeed. watching. This was incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Don't forget to click the notification bell. Ha <laughs> <laughs>